Chapter 3 Milo reclined his chair in his room and closed his eyes. His next lesson would take about 20 minutes to download into his brain. He was trying to cram as much data into his brain as possible, but after a while he had a migraine and his nose started to bleed. No matter how strong a desire a person had to accelerate the lessons, there was a limit to how much the brain could handle. Sensing he had overdone it, Milo slowly climbed into his bed, a seven-foot-long hyperbaric oxygen chamber. The increased pressure combined with the infused oxygen had tremendous therapeutic capabilities. It also allowed people to get a full night's sleep in only three hours, in effect increasing a person's conscious lifespan. The only problem was that these beds were very expensive and not everyone could afford them. Fortunately, the facility happened to have them. Since a lot of the inhabitants were orphans, extra funding went toward the facility to make sure that they had the best resources in an effort to ensure that they did not grow up to become criminals. Perhaps it was society's way of making restitution for an enacting a harsh law, which forced a lot of children to be separated from their families. As the oxygen began to fill the chamber, Milo took in several deep breaths. The oxygen-enriched air entered his lungs and saturated his bloodstream. The blood was then distributed to his soft tissue and he began to feel relaxed. Almost instantly, he was sound asleep, allowing the chamber to work its magic. About an hour into his sleep, an alarm went off, alerting him of an incoming call. A soft glow illuminated the interior of the chamber as the hatch slowly opened. Milo's brain was still a little foggy, having just woken up, but he managed to find his access pod. Answer, he commanded. His access pod initiated the call sequence, and the voice came through on the other end. Hey Milo, it's me, Alex said. Hi Alex. I hope I'm not interrupting anything, but I was wondering if you heard about the leader coming to the Megaplex to give his State of the Union address. No, I didn't know about any union address. Oh, that actually reminds me of another union address. I have to go down to Union and Lexington. Do you want to come? What's that Union and Lexington? A top secret mission awaits if you choose to accept. You know what? Say no more. I'm in. Great. So what about the other union address? When and where? I'm sending you the details now. Milo rose to his feet and got dressed. He looked disheveled, but decided to go with it. He did not bother combing his hair. He simply brushed his teeth, put on his jacket, and left. By the time he arrived at the pyramid, chaos had already ensued. A massive crowd of people had flocked in droves to be in the leader's presence and hear him speak. Anytime the leader made a public appearance, it was generally well received. Maxim Morrison defied the ancient saying that absolute power corrupts absolutely. He came from a well-respected family of leaders and innovators. However, despite his overwhelming support, There were still many issues of contention which caused people to protest. Whether it was the freedom to procreate, the abolishment of the accountability chips, or the capitalization limits imposed on corporations, history had shown no matter what the issue, there was always at least one person with a dissenting view. Before the leader's convoy arrived at the Megaplex Pyramid, people had already found their spots on the large grass field. Where do you guys want to sit? Doesn't matter to me. Don't worry, I know where to sit. Follow me. Milo was having a difficult time adjusting to Alex's new friend, especially since Eris was handsome, charming, and apparently knew the best place to sit. Milo did his best to hide his contempt. As they pushed their way through the crowd, Alex grabbed a hold of Milo's hand. A sigh of relief came over him briefly. Ah, she chose me, he thought. The moment was short-lived because after she grabbed Milo's hand, she called out to Eris, who was ahead of him, and grabbed his hand as well. The three of them connected like a train, and made their way through the crowd until they reached their spot. Here we are, Eris said, letting go of Alex's hand. Milo held on for an extra second longer. It's not much of a spot here, Eris, Milo said condescendingly. We're way off to the side. I know the view isn't the best, but it's still an ideal location for when we leave. Think about it. When the crowds eventually disperse, they'll head east. So we give up a bit of a view now, but in turn, what we gain is that we don't get caught in the stampede. Good thinking, Eris. Yeah, good job, Eris, Milo said begrudgingly. They took their seats on the grassy knoll, with Alex sitting in between Milo and Eris. She flipped her hair back and to the left, then got more comfortable. So, Alex, tell me more about this top secret mission. Oh, right, the top secret mission. Okay, so you know how I don't know my mom, right? Yeah. Well, Eris suggested I scan my face into one of those facial recognition programs. The program will modify my face to create an image of what I might look like at different ages. I can then take the images down to my own neighborhood to see if anyone recognizes the images, 
which should more or less look like my mother. This city has over 10 million people spread out over hundreds of neighborhoods. How do you know which neighborhoods to go to? Eris suggested the neighborhood around Union and Lexington because he knows an oat blanket manufacturing company. He thinks it may have been the same company that made the blanket I have. Wow, you're just full of good ideas, aren't you, Eris? Milo said in a snarky tone. Alex shot Milo a harsh look as if to indicate for him to play nicely. Despite this, the temptation to destroy Eris in front of Alex was just too great for Milo to resist. You know, there are of course several flaws in your theory, Milo proudly announced. First, you're putting a lot of faith in this blanket factory, which may or may not have produced the blanket in question. Let's suppose they did. Why would you assume your mother lived in the same neighborhood as the manufacturer? That makes no sense. This blanket factory probably sold blankets all over the world, so it hardly narrows down which neighborhood your mother lived in once she acquired it. Assuming, of course, she in fact owned it at some point. Secondly, you're not a clone of your mother. The images you have are a program's best guess as to what you may look like in different ages, but not your mother. And finally, and I will close with this, even if you do look like your mother, the blanket did come from the factory, your mother owned the blanket at some point, and the blanket factory also happened to be in the same neighborhood as your mother's old neighborhood. As implausible as all those factors may be, you still have to find someone who recognizes her, which, unfortunately, seems highly unlikely. Milo sat back with folded arms and a smug look on his face, proud of his logical deconstruction of Eris's theory. Realizing the soundness of Milo's logic, Alex felt a sudden wave of despair come over her. At first, Milo felt like he had just redeemed himself by destroying Eris's theory, but he had inadvertently hurt Alex. Her hopes of finding her mother had been caught in the crossfire of his attack. Alex bowed her head low in sorrow. I could be wrong, Milo said in an attempt to console her. I mean, what do I know? You're the smart one. If you need any help, just let me know. Eris gave Milo a dirty look. If Milo didn't feel so badly, he would have retaliated in kind. He put his arm around Alex and offered some words of encouragement. Can I at least see the images? I'm curious to know what you'll look like when you get old. Alex didn't answer. Come on, I bet you still look pretty. Alex gave a faint smile as she seemed to be overcoming her momentary sadness. I'll show you the images, but don't laugh. Alex brought up the images on her access pod to show Milo. Okay, so this one is what I'm supposed to look like at 30. She said as she showed Milo the first image. Milo leaned in closer. Wow, not bad. You're still a total babe. And this is what I'm supposed to look like at 40. Again, not bad. Alex smiled approvingly, then showed him the final image of her 50-year-old caricature. Is that it? Just three images? Well, as you mentioned, this is obviously a long shot so I didn't want to waste a lot of time getting a new image for every different variable. Remember, I intend to show these to people, and I'm sure they're not going to want to flip through an entire catalog of me. Why not? I would. Very funny. I think these are good enough. People will either recognize me or they won't. They can use their brains to fill in the other details, like weight or hair color. So when do you plan to go? I'd like to go today. We actually plan to go right after the speech is over. We wouldn't want to go right after Eris. A lot of people that may know Alex's mother could be sitting here in this audience. If we rushed too soon, we would be missing a lot of those people. But I'm sure you have a plan for that too, right? Milo said smugly as he delivered another blow to Eris's ego. We can wait a bit then. Maybe we can all have lunch in the pyramid before we go. There was a long awkward pause as they all just sat there. Alex was trying to figure out a way that everyone could just get along.